I am here with Serena Roy at Dublin Roasters. You have created a space that has just I don't know. It, has it exceeded your expectations? Uh, yes, indeed. <laughs> like exponentially, whenever I drive into the parking lot, yeah. and I'm like parking on the lawn, I'm like, wow. Yeah. You know, the chiropractic store my next door must be busy. Yeah. And I'm like, oh wait, it's not it's that. You. It's, it's, it's you. It's all of us. But yeah, it's neat. It's yeah, neat to it see. is. It continues to kind of morph and grow. Uh, when you started, that you didn't have as much space. Right. What, what's next? Oh my goodness. Well, as if this isn't enough, right? I mean, you know, last Saturday I did dishes for three hours. Did you? So, so yeah. Living people, the dream. Yeah, people say, oh, when are you going to open your next store? I was like, are you out of your mind? I'm in like phase three of life. Yeah. I don't know where you think I'm yeah. at, but that's not. Um, I, you know, I guess when, when people say, you know, what is next, they automatically think you need a second location. Oh, yeah, yeah. But no. that's, that's like not kind of what I'm looking at. Yeah. I'm looking at more of, you know, my love is in the, uh, the, the people that are growing the bees. Yes. And so to, to think about it in that respect, I'd rather travel backwards yes. and say, well, now we need a, a farm. Far, right. Right. Now we need to I was watch wondering it if from, that was coming. Yeah, from yeah. growth all the way to the cup. And yeah. I just think that would be just a super cool experience. Have you always been passionate about coffee? No, not always. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, you know, growing up in New England, it's cold. Yeah. So people drink coffee okay. all day, all night. Okay. Um, but I just, I did not fancy coffee so much until yeah. um, I had a child. Ah. And you know, trying to keep up with her nighttime <laughs> patterns, I found myself brewing a pot of coffee at night. Okay. And the only thing that really soothed her and put her back to sleep was just kind of us sitting there watching a basketball game. The, the white noise in yeah. the background. Yeah. So coffee and basketball. Oh, that was it. That was my nighttime and you're, routine okay. and I was hooked. So then I wanted better coffee. Right. And the tastes were like, I wanted fresh coffee and I was in search of like better things to put in my body. So I was looking for, you know, roasters, which there weren't very many. Okay. You know, all we had was the Frederick Coffee Company. Right. And uh, some, some ladies that owned that had one roaster, three stools, and uh, was at the fudge shop. So oh, yeah. I went in there and I was just in love. So that's how I found my love for coffee. Yeah. yeah. Well, you, you, you said, okay, hey, I think I can do a coffee shop. Yeah, well, <laughs> No. <laughs> no, the answer again, hell yeah. no. I did not want a coffee shop. So, so I was, uh, you know, moving away from police work right. and coffee roasting and the, the wholesale was really picking up for me. So I kind of wasn't um, really keen on people back then. <laughs> I know. Thank so God it's my, changed. My, <laughs> when you're when you're in yeah. that line of work, yeah. there's a lot of negative energy, oh, yeah. and you soak in a lot of negative energy. Yeah. So for me, coffee You've roasting. Been yeah, You've been peopled out. Yeah, coffee been peopled roasting, out. Yeah. A way to wring it out. Yeah. Get it yeah. out. Let the stress go. Yeah. So the last thing I wanted to do was <laughs> open a coffee shop. I was like, that's insane. Um, what ended up happening was I moved here to this building and the road didn't go through at the time when I moved here uh, so this wasn't you know people yeah. didn't travel this far north right um, which I was okay with yeah so but but then so I moved here and I actually used this kind of as a woman cave yeah so I roasted and did everything in the back not open to the public and I parked my car in here I had a basketball hoop did you really? I had two pool tables <laughs> And we just had fun. Yeah, it that was a is cave a great space. Here. So we had a good time. Yeah. And people would smell the coffee roasting and they would be like, you know, like banging, I smell coffee. Can I buy some? Oh my gosh. Like, We're not a coffee shop. Yeah. And then a um, little at a time, it took a, it took a while for yeah. me to really just say, hey, I can, I can welcome people in the space. Yeah. And, you know, it took like six months for permits. Yeah. And the whole, um, part that really helped was that a lot of people wanted to work with me yeah and i'm like you do 
We love people and we're extroverts and we love to do that. Yeah. And so I've always really surrounded myself by a, a great staff. Yeah. Um, and they have to be very self-sufficient. Yeah. Because I am not a management yeah. person. I'm yeah. just not into that style. You know, yeah. I don't want, I want people who just can manage themselves and yeah. enjoy coffee as much as I do. Uh, yeah. And I think I found 20 people, 22 people so far that just I mean, really love it. That, and know? I will say this, every time I've been in here, your staff is awesome and amazing. Yeah. And I think giving people the freedom to kind of do, yeah. you know, you're not holding them down and setting a ceiling and saying you've got to exactly. stay in this square. Like, I think they all uh, are excellent, but it's yeah. a true testament to you that you can find 22 people like that, to be honest. Yes. Like, I, I, that's well, stunning. I mean, you know, we've known how staffing has happened after COVID, especially yeah. where that's not always easy. A lot of people are, right. you know, have really experienced, we've all experienced the trauma of yeah. it. So yeah. I've noticed, you know, it's starting to get more of a uh, a levelness to yeah. it, where people aren't just leaving or calling in sick a lot or things like that. So I think it, we're on the mend, that, yeah, but that's um, great. It, it's it's really a culture, um, yeah. and they create the culture. The yeah. staff creates the culture because they only want you. You're here five to eight hours a day, and you yeah. want to be surrounded by people that yeah. you know are good for you exactly. and good for the business. So. Yeah. So, okay, so you got this space as you were yep. moving, you moved out the pool tables moved and the, the pool basketball. Table, stop parking in here. Yeah, and yeah. yeah. The, the city gave me a permit to be a coffee shop <laughs> nice. um, and a roastery, which yeah. is really a whole segment because there, there aren't a lot of places that do that. Yeah. So it kind of had to pave the way. Yeah. And so that means you get your beans from all over the world. Just, yeah. And they're yeah. just fresh and yep. they're, and then you have to roast them yes. and then make them into coffee. Exactly. So okay. they're fresh grown. Yeah. Um, imported, exported over to the U.S. I yeah. have them trucked in to, to this facility. And then we have a hot air roaster. It's like yeah. a giant popcorn machine. It is, yeah. Um, and recently, so our, our other machine is Poppy. And she's 50. Oh, wow. So she's tired. Yeah. So I got a I new roaster. I don't blame Poppy. Poppy's tired. <laughs> Um, but she's going to live on. Yeah. So we got a new roaster. When did you start traveling overseas to check out where the beans were grown and the families yeah. that were growing them? Because I know you're very passionate about free, fair trade and, and all of that. So mm -hmm. when did that start? Uh, let's see. Well, when I was uh, started with the canine division, you ended up accruing a little bit more vacation time because okay. it was extra work to be with the dog. So right. I would find myself with like longer weekends, long vacations. So in addition, um, you know, to just ordering coffee and not visiting, I started little trips to like Mexico, okay. you know, where you could have a vacation yeah. <laughs> and some beans. Yeah. And then uh, the next was Peru. So then I just got the bug after a couple of countries and just seeing how it all worked. So. Um, you know, we have pictures kind of displaying, been yeah. to Colombia, um, a trip over here on the wall that you can't see just now, yeah. is from Ecuador. Yeah. Um, just got back from Costa Rica two weeks mm. ago, where we had um, a very cool tasting with uh, an indigenous tribe that has grown coffee forever on their land. Unreal. Uh, and got to make pottery with them. So that, it was just, they, just jazz me up because yeah. if you're ever in a lull it'll revive you about what you do yeah. when you go and see where it's grown and they're as passionate as i am about uh, brewing it roasting it as, you know as they are as about growing yeah. it and cultivating that you know lifestyle so well and what a great feeling for you to have that experience bring their product here and then share it with people here in frederick i mean that's yeah. really a cool conduit that you become you know yeah. where you're sharing that that culture and that mm -hmm. um, cultivation which is really cool yeah anything um, other than just kind of keeping things low-key on the horizon for you that you think mm. retirement anytime no. <laughs> that's a dirty word what would I do yeah oh yeah gosh, I don't know. You know I don't know yeah I don't you know I see um, when you say retirement I what I think about is I just want to have more freedom to yeah. do more things out and about. Yeah. And that, that to me is retirement, is yeah. getting, 
it, and if you really love what you're doing, it's every like every day is a gift, uh, right? Yeah. yeah. I, and it sure. sounds cliche, but it's like if you if I didn't love what I did, I would absolutely leave it right away and of find course. a different hat. Yeah. Same. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Same mm -hmm. for me. So that's exactly you know, that. There's is tons the of truth. hats out there. There and, are tons. Yeah. And there's there's a lot of things you can do. So as long as I still love it, yeah. You know, I I want to keep doing it at some some, some aspect, level, right? even if it's. I, I, uh, I don't know if it's police work, but I hate schedules. For me, what's on the horizon is to just be able to roam freely about. Yeah. Is there I any country you haven't visited yet that's on your bucket list? You know, there's, there's so many places I still want to go, and I know I won't be able to visit them all, yeah. but um, Hawaii has escaped me for a while. I love to see Viet Vietnam. Yeah. Um, they make some really amazing coffee, so yeah, yeah just wherever. Wherever the wind blows, yeah. wherever people look me up and say, hey, come visit my farm. And you're like, hey, I'm happy like, to. You don't have to ask me twice. Yeah, exactly. Now you do a lot. You give so much back to the community. I'm always appreciative every time I've contacted you. You've said, sure, what can I do? <laughs> Which I love, but you do a lot of um, coffees for um, fundraisers and things yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. how, how has that affected the business in a way or, or affected you in a way that you are able to have an impact with what your product is and yeah. actually helping and giving back. Yeah, that that part um, is a couple of couple of things that have hit me on that realm. Um, I really did miss police work, some of the aspects, and it was really about what can you do in your community yeah. to like bring people up. And that was uh, something I got to do. And, and being the queen of the business and the company, there's no red tape. Yes. So I always get to say, sure, okay. And that sounds fun anyway, and then you just make it happen. Yeah. I learned through, through COVID that when we shut down, I had so many people come and support me. You did this fundraiser for me. Mm. You gave me these beans. You helped with Safe and Sane. You just a, a thousand people. And yeah. I was so um, inspired and grateful yeah. that I chose to just do that and not look at the bottom line all the time. Yeah. Well, it feels good. It does feel good, yeah. But it also says that, you know, what you put out there definitely comes back. Yeah. Um, and it was a, an amazing way. I didn't think that I could afford anything, but that was marketing that was invaluable. Yes, when you're, when you're you know, so pure-hearted and good and you really uh, are, are so generous that I'm so glad that you've been able to experience the comeback now. Being a mom and having to do those fundraisers for like <laughs> swim team and baseball and softball and all that stuff, I remember, you know, having to sell pizzas and cheese yes. and wrapping paper. Yeah. And I thought to myself, there's got to be an easier gotta way. Be, yes. So creating the coffee fundraisers was just, I wanted to make it as easy for people as possible. Yeah. So all you have to do is send me the logo, a blurb about what you're trying to raise money for. And it's so simple. It's, it's just a link I send you and you can share to everybody you know, yeah. which really helps us out marketing wise because sure. we gain those customers for life. So, uh, and it's something people want. And it is something yeah. they want. That's mm -hmm. right, yeah. <laughs> well, look, if you haven't been to Dublin Roasters, you must come. It's a great place just to hang out, meet with friends, maybe a Hadaway challenge every now and then. Oh, That's yes. a little rotary thing. But uh, it, come and support uh, Serena and her team. They just have supported this community from day one, and uh, we hope you're around while well, this place is around for a long time to come. It'll we hope you're here. out traveling somewhere. I'll, I'll be somewhere, and I'll, and I'll catch you around <laughs> here for a cup of coffee. So thank you. All right, until next time.